what is up artists and movers welcome back to my channel where we are taking our love for dance to the next level and today we're taking the care of our bodies to the next level more specifically our feet as dancers our feet get pretty beat up on a daily basis so in today's video i'm going to show you my basic dancer pedicure that i do once a month to help me prevent blisters and toenail injuries when i dance this little pedicure is super basic, but just luxurious enough that you can feel like you're having a little spa day. So if you're ready to take care of those feet, then let's jump into this video. So the first step in my dancer pedicure is for me to do a foot soak, and I like to do milk baths for my foot soak. To do this, you're gonna need one container for your feet to soak in. I got this little container at Dollar Tree for a dollar. One cup of powdered whole milk, and I will make sure to include a link for this and the rest of the products in the description box below um, in case like your local grocery store doesn't have powdered milk and stuff like that. The lactic acid in Milk Works is a great gentle exfoliant while the fats and proteins in it also leave the skin feeling moisturized and hydrated. So using Milk is just a way to kind of step up the benefits of your foot soak in comparison to just using warm water. You can also use liquid milk. Powdered milk is just much easier to store and keep for longer periods of time. You're also going to need a half cup of Epsom salt and a sugar scrub. This sugar scrub is a DIY. I just combined olive oil and sugar together. You want to make sure that you use sugar, not salt, and any oil of your choice. I had olive oil, so that's what I used, but if you're into more of the jojobas, the avocado oils, you can use any oil, it doesn't really matter. So first, you're going to fill the container with warm water. I don't do any specific amount, I just make sure that there's enough to ensure that my feet are fully submerged. Then add the powdered milk and the Epsom salt. The powdered milk may get a little lumpy, so I just use this little wooden spoon to kind of spread it out and make sure there weren't any clumps. <laughs> In retrospect, I probably should have used more like a whisk or something like that. But you just want to take the time to make sure that there are no clumps. I'm gonna warn y'all, this powdered milk smells like baby formula. So if you hate the smell of baby formula, um, you know, I warned you. But the smell does go away once it's completely dissolved in the water. For a little extra healing power, I'm actually gonna add some eucalyptus essential oil to this milk bath as well. Eucalyptus has anti-inflammatory properties and it also just smells really nice and can help if your feet get a little stinky sometimes. So I like to add this to my milk baths as well, just for some extra pain relief. Once I've stirred the mixture, I set a timer for 20 minutes and let the milk bath do its thing. While my feet are soaking, I'll either catch up on whatever show I'm binge watching on Netflix or I'll read something. So today I was in the mood to read and I'm reading the book Brain Rules by John Medina. I love books like this that are like a little bit of research and science and a little bit of self-help, a little bit of psychology. I just, I love reading books like that. So if you guys want me to do an actual video on like some really great books that I've read this year, let me know in the comments. Once my feet are done soaking, it's time to get to work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this sugar scrub to gently exfoliate the skin on my feet and around my ankle. The sugar and the oil will help to hydrate and lock in the moisture in the skin while the scrubbing acts as an exfoliant and just helps really take off any loose dead skin that's already kind of flaking off of the feet. When I'm doing this, I make sure that I'm getting total coverage of my foot. So I'm getting into my arch, really focusing on those heels, getting in between my toes. There's dead skin on every single part of your foot. So I just really make sure I'm taking my time and getting full coverage of my feet. Now it's time for the part that's honestly the most important and probably gonna take you the most time and that is removing the unnecessary callus. So to do this, I'm gonna use this little buffer that I got for callus. One side is more coarse and one side is more fine. I'm gonna use the coarse side first to really get into any areas where I want to remove the callus and then the fine side to do a gentle buffing over the entire foot so that there's no jagged edges when the skin starts to grow back. Now, the key to getting less painful blisters when you dance is making sure that you have callus in the right parts of your feet to protect you for when you turn or land from a jump. For example, on this foot, I actually have a blister coming in, but I can't even feel it and I honestly didn't even know it was there because the layers of callus that are there are acting as protection. So you do want callus in the right places and you want to keep the callus from being in the wrong places. 
key places that you want to leave callus are on the balls of your feet and under your big toe. I'm a firm believer that callus on your heels is unnecessary, just totally unnecessary. It's not cute. You look dry and cracked. So I'm definitely going to take that off. But on the balls of my feet, I'm only going to do just a light, light buff. I'm going to leave most of that callus there. Callus that's unnecessary is going to look white or grayish when your feet are dry, but it's all going to appear yellow when your feet are moist. So just make sure that when you are removing callus, you're keeping it in the places where it needs to stay and that are going to protect you and removing it from anywhere else. To get into smaller areas with more detail, I'm going to use this callus file to ensure that I'm really just taking off the callus that I don't need. I don't want to take off too much or accidentally take it off from areas that I need for it to stay. So for this big toe, I'm going to take the callus off of the top since that's not really necessary, but I'm going to leave it on the bottom of my toe and kind of on the side. Once I've tended to the calluses on my feet, it's time to focus on the toenails. So first I'm going to use this cuticle pusher to push back any dead skin that is creeping up toward my toenails. For me, really on my last two toes is where I really see a lot of this like cuticle dead skin buildup. I really think it's just from like dancing and my toes shoving in my shoes and from when I used to dance in point shoes a lot. Just over time, those two toes have really taken a beating. So I give a lot of attention to those areas of my feet. Then after I've pushed the dead skin back from the cuticle, I use these cuticle clippers to remove any dead skin. Dead skin at the cuticle is going to appear translucent white. So when you're removing the skin, make sure you're only taking off those parts, not any parts that appear brown or your skin tone. Then for the actual toenail, I'm going to go in and trim the whites of my nails down so that they're almost gone. For me, I've just found that because I dance, it works better for me to keep my toenails really short. I have lost whole toenails because I kept them too long and they became bruised and injured from point shoes and stuff and I ended up just losing the entire toenail completely and had a foot without a toenail on it. So I don't keep my toenails long anymore. You could say I'm traumatized, scarred from that. But if you are someone who likes a longer nail, then just trim it and shape it according to your own taste. After shaping the nail, I follow up with a nail file just to smooth the edges of the nail so I can avoid any snagging um, on any rough edges of my toenails. Especially when I dance in socks, I've found that sometimes if my nails are a little bit jagged, they'll get nicked on the socks and then it's just uncomfortable. So taking a nail file just really helps to smooth out those edges and define your shape. Also on my last two toes, they kind of grow disformed and discolored so I also use the nail file actually on the top of my toenail as well to take off that darkened nail and I do that until the nail appears flesh colored and smooth. Next after my nails are shaped and trimmed I like to go ahead and moisturize my feet and I do it using this Aveeno eczema therapy. Y'all if anyone ever asked me the best like moisturizer of all time this wins is no comparison. I use it all over my body, but especially on your feet, you want to use something that's more of a balm, something that's thicker, that's really going to penetrate all of those layers of skin because you are leaving callus there. And this is just the best moisturizer for me. What is on the pricier side, if you've seen my what I spend in a week video, then you saw how much it costs, <laughs> but it's worth every single penny. At this point, if you're someone who likes to paint your nails, this is where you would do that. I personally don't paint my nails just because with dancing it's not worth it because it scuffs off so easily. But if you do choose to, just make sure that you take a cotton swab with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and remove the excess oils from your toenails first before painting them. So once my feet are moisturized and hairless and my toenails are straight, my last and final step is to roll out my arches. Just give them a nice massage, really get deep, deep into those arches, even in the balls of my feet. And then finally, I just put on these cute little booties. These are so comfortable, so soft. I like to just walk around in the house with them, but they also help to hold in moisture from that balm that we just put on our feet and make sure that it soaks deeply into every single layer of the skin since I did leave callus on my feet. And that is it, you guys. That is my dancer foot care routine. This just helps me make sure that I get less blisters and I don't injure my toenails. And that way I can focus more on dancing and less on worrying about if my feet hurt or not. 
Let me know in the comments if you get pedicures or if you do them yourself. I remember when I was younger, my teachers always told me in ballet class, never get a pedicure because they take all the callus off. For some reason, I've just that's just stuck with me and so I've developed my own little system for doing it myself. If you guys wanna see a video on how I actually take care of blisters so that I'm ready and up and dancing the next day, then let me know down in the comments below. And of course, while you're here, you might as well subscribe. I post new videos every week on dancing and how to dance better and my thoughts on dancing and all just the dance related stuff. We love dance over here. You know what I'm saying? We love to dance. So become part of the family and I will see you guys in my next video next weekend. Later.